Hey there, this is Joe, product reviewer here at alexfergus.com. And in this video, we are going to have a look at Infinite Ages Body Protection Compound, also known as BPC-157, the hot peptide that seems to be taking the biohack world over by storm. So in this particular product here by Infinite Age, we have 60 capsules in a 500 microgram dose. And uh, the serving size on the bottle says one capsule, although I'm not sure anybody out there knows exactly what the correct dose of this supplement. We'll get into that information later on in the video. But first, let's take a second and start talk about this concept of peptides. What are peptides? Why are they uh, taking the, the biohacker world by storm? What's the interest there? Well, the human body is responsible for making thousands, if not tens of thousands of different proteins that all serve specific functions within the body. And peptides are a protein of a continuous chain of amino acids, the building blocks of all proteins. When you take these amino acids and start stacking them together, apparently there's 20 or so in the human body that can be put together in all kinds of combinations, these proteins then start to create these different folds. And I kind of liken it to a, a spaghetti noodle that starts to curl up and fold on itself. Essentially what you're left with is an infinite number of combinations of shapes due to these amino acid chains all folding together. Now it's the shape of these proteins then when they bind to a receptor that exerts a specific function. And I think that's why this has gathered some interest here is because with this BPC-157 or any of the protein peptides, uh, you've got a unique shape that binds to a specific receptor causing some sort of unique reaction within the body. So why BPC-157? What, what, what's its history and why is it important? Well, go, research goes all the way back to 1993 uh, when I believe this is discovered and researchers have found that this particular protein the peptide that is produced in the GI system apparently has some pretty significant impacts on soft tissue healing, uh, taking care of issues that are related to tendons, ligaments, muscle tissue, what have you. So there's actually a fairly robust amount of research that has been published in the literature that describes the impact of the BP-157 peptide on the soft tissue issues. It apparently has a pretty good efficacy there. And in fact, uh, there's a great review out there published in the Journal of Cell and Tissue Research. Uh, looks like this is 2019, so fairly recent uh, publication here. Does a great job of reviewing uh, the summary of the science out there that has looked at BP-157 and its, in its ability to help facilitate soft tissue issues. Uh, now granted, a lot of the research that has been done on this particular peptide has been focused exclusively on small animals such as rats and such, uh, but even still, uh, the outcomes there have been pretty darn positive. They seem to do have, or the peptide does seem to have a pretty significant impact on its ability to facilitate uh, soft tissue issues. So I would recommend, uh, if you got the chance, uh, head over to the alexfergus.com blog and have a look at the blog post that we wrote on BP. C157. Uh, you can get a link directly to the scientific article I'm referencing here. It, it's really published online and anyone can grab it without having to pay for it. Uh, so while th there is a, a pretty good amount of scientific literature that seems to support this, uh, as with many supplements, uh, their efficacy has yet only been looked for in, in small animal models. There are no human studies that have looked at the efficacy of BBC 157. Uh, so we have to rely on anecdotes uh, then to determine whether or not this seemingly has a fit for, for human consumption. And uh, certainly there is a, you know, plenty of stories out there on the interwebs that describe its, this product's ability to be used in managing small tissue issues uh, and injuries and such. However, what we find is that oftentimes uh, this is being inter in, uh, administered intravenously. So folks are taking a small dose of this, putting it inside a needle and injecting it either into the arm or to the thigh in order to get uh, circulation of the peptide to hit its target tissues. Uh, makes sense that that's gonna be a more effective delivery model. Uh, you pass first, uh, bypass first pass liver metabolism and therefore making more of the active ingredients available to its target tissues versus oral ingestion, which of course goes to the digestive system can oftentimes be broke down before it can even hit the target tissue. So of the anecdotes that I was able to read out there that suggested BPC-157 has good efficacy against things like soft tissue issues, again, uh, primarily isolated to the injectable form versus the oral form.
Despite that most of the anecdotes out there are due to the injected form, uh, we still wanted to give it a try here at alexfergus.com and see if we can notice any response by taking the oral version of the supplement. So uh, I personally took it myself as well as a few colleagues here at alexfergus.com and I can share with you some of the experiences we had. Uh, so why would I take the supplement in the first place? Well, I, I'm a mid 40 year old guy uh, with a bunch of kids, busy lifestyle, full time job, uh, pursuing optimal health and wellness, trying to extend my lifespan as much as possible as well as my health span. And so looking for anything I can use to you know, give me more longevity, longevity as well as higher quality longevity uh, through the long term as evidenced by the, uh, the chart behind me here. Uh, no major concerns or issues. I don't actually have any soft tissue damage that I'm concerned about. However, uh, given my middle 40-something age, uh, running three to four times a week and doing some lifts in between, uh, certainly uh, I can feel the wear and tear on the joints. So I thought, if anything, perhaps the supplement could help me alleviate some of the knee soreness or some of the delayed onset muscle soreness that might result from, from work exercising vigorously in, in the mid-stage of life. Uh, so I used the, the recommended dosage for 30 days and uh, I personally did not notice any difference in how I felt. I did not notice any difference in recovery after intense exercise or anything of that sort. So take it for what you will, N equals one there, um, an active 40 something year old guy did not experience any significant benefit as a result of using the supplement per its recommended dose. Uh, another colleague at Alex Fergus, as I mentioned earlier, a similar age profile, similar lifestyle profile, also uh, did not experience anything of note while taking the supplement. However, a third colleague here at alexfergus.com uh, was taking the supplement to see if that could impact any effect on fibromyalgia. And this particular individual stated that after four weeks of, of usage, uh, it was it was it was mind blowing. It was an incredible experience. Apparently, much of the pain had gone away as well as brain fog this individual had experienced. So there's an example where the supplement did seem to work well in a pre-existing condition. However, Important to note as well that this particular individual appeared to experience some sort of immunological reaction to the supplement after a period of time. Uh, not surprising perhaps that this could happen in a small percentage of the population. These peptides as uniquely shaped proteins uh, likely can be recognized by the immune system as, as foreign and therefore um, the body would mount uh, an immunological allergic type reaction that uh, then would, would unfortunately have to cause a discontinuation of the supplement. And that's exactly what happened for this particular individual. So despite the positive outcome, the immune system decided to respond unfavorably and therefore had to discontinue the supplement. Now, it's also important to note that uh, the FDA has not recognized, recognized this as a dietary supplement. It is still considered a research ingredient, uh, so I would caution buyer beware. Um, so in summary, you know, what, what, what purpose does this particular peptide serve? Um, if you're not going to use it as an intravenous injection, and we certainly don't advocate that here, uh, if you're going to use it as the oral form, uh, I would recommend perhaps considering this as an alternative to addressing uh, soft tissue damage. If you've recently suffered some sort of injury, other interventions have not worked out well for you. Uh, again, based on the literature, it seems like this has potential promise as something that can accelerate top soft tissue repair. Uh, but again, just be warned that uh, so far we do not see a lot of evidence that the oral dietary supplement form is going to impact a major efficacious response. So there's our short review on the use of the dietary peptide BPC-157. Hope you enjoyed uh, the quick review here. And again, I, I would urge you to go over to the alexfergus.com blog where we wrote up a little bit more extensive article that then cites the research there that you can have a look on your own. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.